So let me just confess this. In case I'm not serious today on the show, this this madam is back, so she will not let me to be serious. Um, Uti Elu, she's here now. Hello, Uti. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Happy New Year, Uti. I haven't seen you since that, January 1st. I know. I haven't seen you in a while. Yes. I had to travel. How are you? Happy I'm New Year. I'm fine. Hey, Thank you. Right? Self-love for me is going to the village. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, I, I didn't understand the whole um, spending Christmas in the East mm -hmm, until yeah. um, I spent some time there myself. And I thought, oh, now I get it. <laughs> it's amazing. I get it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Really, I've never, I've never been to the east too. No, it's, it's awesome. Christmas. It's, it's really, really oh, interesting should. just to, to see it. It's a, it's, see do, they do, do they do bonfire at night? All those things. I, well, we don't do bonfire, but there's just too much going on. There is event. There is reunion. You're connecting with cousins, and you know how you meet in the city, and they tell you this is your grandfather's great uncle's brother, sister. <laughs> Yeah, we all do that visiting, so you just know yourselves, and for adventure, you meet each other in the city. You don't say. Mommy, I want to marry this guy. Oh, then, yeah, okay. Stuff like I that. see, I see, I see. <laughs> because Sansi is on holiday mood, she, do, she doesn't have a story for us. So, Uti, what did you oh find for God, us in the news? No. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm back on one of my favorite topics mm -hmm. of NIN mm -hmm. and saga around SIM cards and um, the registration. So, of course, we know that the federal government has said that we should um all go and register and link our nins to and that's our national identity numbers to our sim card so i'm actually taking two stories in one uh the first headline says more discomfort for nigerians as nimsi issues fresh directive now so this directive was actually just providing clarity now if you remember when the nin was was um released initially it was said that um if you have a bvn that an nin would be automatically generated for you um, but this is just the National Identity Management Commission now coming out to clarify that the NIN generated by the BVN would still require um, uh, would still require citizens to go to an enrollment center to somewhat activate that number to be able to integrate it to their SIM. Mm -hmm. So again, um, adding further distress into this situation, which then ties into the second story. And this second story has a headline that says, NIN registration, FG speaks on ultimatum to block SIM card. So here, this is just the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, uh, one of my favorites, you all know how I feel about him, right? Issa mm -hmm. Fantami mm -hmm. um, has disclosed about the ultimatum. So here, and why this story really stuck out for me, I mean, I've, I've never hid my, my um, disdain for this multiple registrations and multiple databases where the details of Nigerians are held. Um, but here he is now speaking about the fact that this was actually a 12 month exercise and he's almost throwing it at the footstep of Nigeria and saying, look, Nigerians had 12 months to do this registration. They didn't go and do it. Um, that this deadline was announced in February of 2020. Well, hello, federal government. Hello, sir. Are you serious? We've been going through a pandemic. We've had a lockdown. People have a lot to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and he's saying that this was announced originally on the 4th of February, 2020. Now, um, that this deadline essentially is not new. Please, you want Nigerians to do something. The world was grappling with a lot of things. What kind of plan, what kind of communication plan did the federal government have to keep this in the consciousness of Nigerians? Mm -hmm. Let's point out that we went into a lockdown in March. We were at home for two months. Everybody comes back, comes out of that, and we're also facing this pandemic and facing the various um, restrictions. And then the federal government says we announced this in February 2020. What did you do to remind Nigerians to do this? I'm not saying that Nigerians are perfect. Of course, NIMSI has been around long before, and the call for registering on your, your NIN has been around way before 2020. But the reality of it is this is human nature. If you want us to do something, put it in our faces, tell us it's important. Why is it two weeks before Christmas that you decide to give us a deadline? It doesn't make any sense. This story for me just shows that, you know, even when our government is well-meaning, the implementation of these things just now leaves a, a bad taste in the, in the mouth of Nigerians. Now, in the, in the face of a, of, a, of a second wave of the pandemic, you're putting people at risk. I mean, a few weeks ago, we we're talking about um, NIMSI staff going on strike because they didn't have protective gear and they were being inundated by people at their enrollment centers. I mean, we can certainly do better. No doubt it's important for us to have this information, even though we're not even harnessing it, we're not 
you know, warehousing it in, in a manner that will benefit Nigeria in the long run, it's all still so disconnected. Mm -hmm. But even if you're going to do it, at least make sure that you're putting the well-being of citizens um, front and center. You have to create urgency to do it, but will you do it in the middle of a pandemic? So, well, so that's just um, a quick summary of those two stories. Of course, we urge everyone to go and get their um, <laughs> so, done in a safe manner as possible um, and, and, and get a link to your SIM card as the government has instructed. Yeah, interestingly, Uti, I, I actually went on my email, uh, my inbox, mm -hmm. and I, I, I searched for the NIMS because I had done the registration online, you know, many years ago, and I checked the date. It was 2014. It was uh -huh. 2014, and I think something happened that stalled it for me that I couldn't go through with the biometrics mm -hmm. and all of that. So now I have to start all over again. So what we are asking the federal government to do is, it's not like we do not want to get this NIN. Can you make the process a bit seamless? Because for some people that have gone online to do all the registration and the documentation, by the time they take the printouts to the NIMSI office, they still tell them that all those ones you pack it aside, will still have to do the it's manual. So, what's the, so how do you reduce... Amidst COVID-19, how do you reduce the interaction with too many people going to that center? I think the government should have been thinking, you know, for a, a more creative way to get this registration done. We already have gone to uh, our various networks for, uh, for our phone numbers to register. They have our biometrics and everything. Couldn't mm -hmm. you just think of a way to link this thing? Must we go to the physical office of NIMC? Well, my story is... Um, you want to well, say something quickly? I, I mean, I, I feel the pain of uh, people going through this, but I've done my registration. I have my NIN card. S Sanzi, so I've said when they're really, talking, you should I not really, be talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's supposed to be a good citizen. Yes. You had to rub so, it in, right? I'm trying to rub no, it in. That's the point. That so have I have the NIN. card. We have it. It's just, what's the urgency? We have it. Even the people that have it, what's the urgency? Why does it have to be everything is now, 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 now? Well... Mm -hmm. Federal government, because we were talking about this, I think it was um, yesterday or day before I said, well, we had Mori on the show when she talked about mm -hmm. school resumption. So I just saw the story, um, 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 says the headline says, Federal government, um, COVID-19 school resumes January 18. Federal government is insisting, right? So the federal government has finally resolved to go ahead with the January 18, 2021 resumption date for schools nationwide, despite the pressure being mounted by some organizations, including the um, Academic um, Staff Union of Universities against reopening of schools and the second wave of the pandemic. You know, the Minister for Education, Adamu Adamu, has um, had... Um, during a press briefing of the pres presidential task force on COVID-19 on Monday said that um, resumption date was not sacrosanct. But now they are saying that, you know, they, they insist that the schools will reopen. So um, the truth is, honestly speaking, as I said, I think I still even mentioned it yesterday yeah. when we we're having a conversation with EC. I said something. I said, see, government has time and time again, they've shown us they are always never They've not thought through certain kinds of processes. They've not really prepared. So whether we are opening on the 18th or the school is opening on the 30th, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of preparedness for government, it makes no difference because it, postponing, the, postponing the resumption date does not guarantee that they have put XYZ in place to ensure that the, the students are resuming safely. Mm -hmm. So the onus is on a lot of And the, the thing actually stalling this is more of, um, what's it called, um, government schools. Because private schools, they've been ready since April or March last year. Yeah, they have been true. ready. They put in a lot of things in place. So it's so more it's of the government the schools. Government schools that are causing this you know? setback. And you, you know cannot delay every other child because you're not prepared. Right. Um, you know what I would say? Um, the same way Nigerians sort of take up our livelihood into our own hands, like your business, you're not waiting for government to provide for you because a lot of times the government is as if they really don't care. You know, I'm not saying they don't care, but they, they act as though they don't care. So I think in that same manner, we should all be um, independent with our, um, um, our care when it comes to COVID. You know, if schools are going to resume, that's fine. But take um, um, precautionary uh, measures. Be, be selfish about it when it comes to your family. Make sure that your kids, if you have to drum it into them, if you have to punish them seven times a day for them to understand the importance of wearing a mask in schools. Yeah. You know, so. I um, think, I think. Yeah, that's in that case, we, we can't, we can't. Uzi, you want to say something? Yes, I just want to ask. Now, we have a huge problem in this country of people who do not believe in the presence of the of COVID-19 in this country. They think it's all propaganda. Mm -hmm. 
you have another set or you have the other reality that says that we are in the wave or we're in the second wave of the pandemic. We see the numbers being released by the NCDC daily mm -hmm. and these numbers are much higher than we're used to. And then in the middle of that, the government says we are opening schools. Please, what is this contradicting message that we're sending? <laughs> we need to get everybody. I mean, is it that we're not seeing what's happening outside of Nigeria? Or Nigerians just think that we have, we think that we have some superpowers. I mean, we've been blessed to escape the worst of this on the first turn around. Now, all over the world, we have all sorts of more contagious versions of this virus flying around. Our airports are not open. Our people are being careless. Now you put your children in the line of fire. Well, it's okay. As long as nobody's coming to voluntarily remove my child from my house to force him to go to school, God be with Uti, all of you. We'll continue this conversation after the break. I'll answer you. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 